Well, hello again. Thank you for tuning in today and watching and sharing in these devotional thoughts. We've been talking about 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 9 and following, where Paul discusses the thorn in the flesh. We don't know what that thorn was, but he was caught up into the third heaven. And in this time of great glory and where he's in the very presence of God, God allows him to experience a painful experience, whatever that was, we don't know. But it's called the thorn in the flesh. I don't know if you've ever noticed it or not, but oftentimes third heaven experiences and thorny experiences happen at about the same time. Uh, for example, in the life of Jesus. Remember he was baptized and the voice from heaven came and said, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. The dove came down as an expression of the Spirit of God's presence. It was just a glorious, glorious time when John the Baptist baptized Jesus Christ. But do you remember what happened immediately after that baptism? Mark says that he was driven into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. So there you have a third heaven experience and a thorn in the flesh experience in the same chapter. We see that happening on, on uh, Mount Carmel and, and Elijah, when Elijah defeated 450 prophets of Baal. But then right after that, you, you remember how he ran in fear of his life from wicked Queen Jezebel. So there you have a great third heaven experience of victory over the prophets of Baal. And then you have that same prophet running away from one wicked queen, Jezebel. It, it happens that way so often in life. I can remember uh, some of the great experiences God has given to me. Uh, for example, I remember getting to, go, uh, getting to plan to go to the Holy Land for my 20th anniversary uh, at, a, at a church I was pastoring at the time and was looking so forward to it until the day before we were to leave, my father had a heart attack and eventually in a couple of weeks, died. There you have a third heaven and a thorn. And that happens so often in life. You know, the devil always wants to use those experiences. When we're on a high, he wants to slip in and rob our joy. Now, I want you to notice the principle here. The principle in this passage is a very simple one. It, it is this, God uses our weakness as a stage upon which to display his own power. Now, God delights in our weakness so that it can be Him and not us that gets the glory. And God's design for your life and mine is that we bring Him glory. Uh, listen to a couple of scriptures that kind of highlight this. Paul wrote in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, he said, You see your calling, brethren, that not many wise according to the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called. But God has chosen the foolish things of the world to put to shame the wise. And God has chosen the weak things of the world to put to shame the things which are mighty. See, God has chosen to use the weak things of the world. There was a, a great uh, evangelist back in the 19th century named D.L. Moody. And D.L. Moody went to England to preach and and uh, Moody was not a real sophisticated kind of guy. And there was a lot of uh, opposition from the preachers to Moody coming over to England to preach. And in fact, a lot of criticism. And so the first night that Moody preached in that, in that crusade uh, and, and, and evangelistic campaign, by the way, which was very effective and many came to Christ, the newspaper went to hear him. And the next day in the newspaper, these words were written. Moody is overweight. He speaks with a nasal tone. He has a high-pitched voice. He slaughters the king's English and generally rough. Frankly, I can see no reason for Moody's success. Now, when Moody read that in the paper that day, this was his response. He says, that's the reason for Moody's success. There is no human reason for Moody's success. You see, Moody understood that God delights in using those weak vessels because when he uses a weak vessel, it is God that gets the glory and not ourselves. I'm thankful for the privilege God has given me through these 55 years to teach and preach the Word of God. But I want you to know I learned real quickly. 
It's not about Tommy Vinson. It's not about any gifts he has. Anything that comes through my life of eternal value is because of him, because of Jesus. He didn't choose me because of anything within myself. He chose me because he wanted to take a weak vessel, fill it with his presence, and bring glory to himself. God bless you today.